Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the next in our ongoing series of reviews of Klemperer's original Warner Collected Edition in individual boxes. And today we get Bruckner. Now, as some of you may know, there is Bruckner, and then there's Bruckner. <laughs> and Klemperer gives us a bit of both. Um, which isn't too surprising because these recordings document in a somewhat sad way his declining grip as he aged. And he did. I mean, you know, there's just no point in gilding the lily. You know, when he was in his late 80s and up there, uh, he was he just wasn't the same guy he was a few years previously. And you hear that. You hear that very clearly. But some of these performances are absolutely magnificent. And they're so interesting in terms of shaping and timing of the works and whatnot. They really are. I mean, because Klemper had a tremendous grasp of, you know, the music's architecture, and he shows that here. He was also such an, a, an unsentimental and not spiritual guy, which makes his Bruckner even more fascinating. So what do we get? <clears throat> We get symphonies four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I mean, that's pretty good, especially for the you know 1970s when the earlier Bruckner symphonies were only being done by strange, cranky, odd German Bruckner cult member conductor people type things. So the fourth is one of the great, great, great Bruckner performances. It's fabulous, and it sounds like no other. It has probably the slowest scherzo on record, which I love because you hear all of the woodwind detail and all of the brass fanfares. You know, ba-da-dum, ba-da-da-da-dum, ba-da-dum, ba -da 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 It's the opposite of like Baron Boehm's razzle-dazzle approach, and it's marvelous. But the slow movement is one of the quickest he gets it he gets it done in less than 14 minutes it's just fantastic frankly i mean the performance as a result has has sort of redistributed its proportions a little bit um the finale is not terribly slow it's under 20 minutes you know the whole performance has has urgency but also majesty it's a fantastic thing to listen to number five not as good Number five suffers from just a, a general flabbiness of approach, especially in that finale that just lets it drag. I'm sorry, it drags. It doesn't have the most fantastic brass playing. The ensemble isn't as tidy as it could be. It's just, it's just not a great fifth. That's the way it goes. The seventh, gorgeous. Absolutely fabulous. Like the fourth, it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful performance with lots of piquant detail and adagio that's not too slow, but also isn't too fast either. He doesn't skate through it. Um, it just has this inexorable forward momentum that's really, really powerful. It's just fantastic. And you get the cymbal crash, by the way, um, if you care. Number six, I do need to do these in order because they're not listed here in order. They're a couple differently. So I'm going to go back and do six. Well, I've talked about the six forever. It's my reference recording. It's one of the great recordings of anything. It's totally fabulous um, and, and glorious, gloriously recorded and fantastically paced and like no other version you'll ever hear. Um, somebody complained bitterly to me about, you know, with a whole list or roster of little tiny ensemble ensemble, you know, mishaps, of which there are, I think, very few that matter um, or that audibly matter. You know, sometimes the string ensemble isn't perfect. I mean, really, who cares? Um, and, and the fact that, that Klemper's approach to tempo is unusual. And that's what makes it so wonderful, frankly. Because, you know, when, he, when Bruckner says slow down, Klemper just keeps going, you know? That's Klemper's approach. And it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. With some conductors, these things don't work. But with Klemper, it does. Everything is in proportion. It's just phenomenal. Okay, number nine. I'm going to come to the last, eight last. Number nine. Number nine is like the fifth. Number nine has the right proportions. The shape is there. There's nothing unusual about it in terms of like, you know, tempo or, or, or proportion. But the playing just isn't there. It just isn't. It's just soggy. And as a result of that, and flabby, it just doesn't have the impact it should have. And particularly when we know the ninth as well as we do, um, and there are so many great performances of it, um, this one just doesn't compete. It's just not competitive. Now, eight. Eight is 
<laughs> yes, they're back. Why? Well, it was done in 1970. It was one of Klemperer's very last recordings. He was very infirm. It, it, I, I mean, the scherzo is 20 minutes long, longer than the first movement by several minutes. It's like, oh, God. And the finale has two massive extra cuts. Really, it's a slow performance, but it comes in at under 20 minutes because it's just chopped to bits. And, you know, Clever didn't care. He said, he said, if you want an uncut finale, find another conductor. I suggest you do just that for the eighth. It's really his worst Bruckner performance. And while you may listen to some of it for bits of, you know, what some people call insights as a result of the incredible slowness and strangeness of it all, um, I don't recommend it. I, you know, it just gets to a point where you've got to say, okay, come on. Enough is enough already, and that eighth is enough. So this is a bit of a mixed bag, but some of it is just wonderful. I mean, four, six, seven, fabulous. Five and nine, eh, and, well, you know, the eighth, no. It just doesn't do it. It's a blot on the conductor's career. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.